wine on or something. And uh, its mass is 53,000 expected. It's theoretically calculated. But how much mass you have to put in here to make that rate right? Okay. And the coupling constants in here are about the same as the C over there. Like three eighths of the C or one fourth of the C or something like that. That is, the constant, though, it's just the same kind of coupling as it is to a photon, but the mass is much higher. And that makes that happen at a very slow rate. So it takes two millionths of a second, two one millionths of a second. That's slow. Because as you know, the frequencies we've been talking about have ten millions and millions and millions, hundreds of millions and millions and millions per second. And this is only a million per second. So uh, now this particle, in the particular case that I explained, if you imagine the particle went from here to here, has another property that I have to explain. It turns out that electric charge is never lost. In this particular experiment, the negative ch electric charge on the mu is appears in the electron. But through the intermediary here it goes, and therefore this intermediate is electrically charged. So this thing is charged. So if we wrote here, charge on all this. That's the wrong thing to do is when you get stuck with the wrong colors, then you have to keep remembering which hand has which. Okay, charge. And a photon doesn't interact with a photon, so it's got a charge of zero. The charge means, how does a photon interact? And the answer is, this has minus one. Oh, I could use green. I can use green. Minus one for the charge. But if this thing, the timing were reversed, and this was a little lower than that, then you would see that this would have to, the thinking of it going backwards, it would have to have a positive charge. And this is the antiparticle, so that the, these W particles and their antiparticles are found both with minus one and plus one. And in addition, it's been found that there is another W which is neutral, and that they now form a nice little triplet, but the neutral one has a higher mass probably, about 70,000 MeV. So we have here a in this theory, we have a thing that looks very, very similar to electrodynamics in the sense that you make the same kind of diagram, in the sense that the coupling is the same order of magnitude. The only differences are a rule, two different, actually, a rule about the charges, about what you're allowed to couple to, huh? and uh, the fact that you use the mass in here. And one other technical detail, which is very interesting and has a good history, is that the coupling is not exactly the same as electrodynamics. There are, I said in these problems that there are many polarization cases, and the couplings are ones and minus ones and sometimes zero. This one has half as many cases that are not zero. It has many zeros where, that a photon doesn't have. So it's coupled just a little differently. By a neutral one, that means that there'll be a process like this. For instance, it could be that a neutrino comes along and comes out as a neutrino and hits an electron. It goes out as an electron. And what happens is that one of these W bosons goes across, but this time it's a neutral one. That has been discovered within the last five, four or five years. It's called neutral currents for some horrible reason. but. Uh, it caused a lot of excitement. So we now have this other particle, and what does it couple to? It couples to the neutrino and the mu. In other words, what we have to ask is now, what are the rules that tell you what kind of junctions it makes? Let's take the junctions with the W minus, the negative one. What pairs of particles can go? We already know a neutrino, even a square chalk, a neutrino mu and a mu is a pair of particles which can be on the junction of a W minus. So they belong together. And the other neutrino goes on a junction with the electron. That's why we named them that way. And it turns out, of course, that the tau, well, we're guessing on that. You see, we believe there must be one. It's some people who are very, very unbalanced who might suggest that that's the same one as this, but of course it's almost certainly a different one. Now, uh, it also turns out 
that a, for instance, a neutron, I'm talking about a strongly interacting particle, and I'm not supposed to be able to talk about that yet, I'll come to that in a minute, but a neutron disintegrates into a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino. And that means that something in the neutrons and protons, the quarks, in fact, can also couple to the W. And so this list isn't quite finished, but I'll finish it later on in the lecture. These are the pairs of particles which belong, which couple to a W particle, and we just have to keep making lists of those. So for every particle, there's a sort of pair, friend, or something that you get from the ones that'll couple with a W minus. So for the electron, there's this, and so it goes. It's a kind of, we don't understand any of this. We just find this out. And if you can figure out what this pattern is all about, then uh, you will have contributed mightily to theoretical physics. That sums up all of the uh, weak, uh, the, oh yes, one more important thing. Because this is charged, the photon coupled to it, and there are diagrams which uh, would be like this, that a, let's say, if, like this is going across, you can have another gamma ray coming out of here. Photon could be coupled to the W. And it also turns out that the theory is nice and neat if you allow a three kinal, a three junction like this in which a W naught and a W plus and a W minus can all come together like that. So we have this and we have that. And the coupling constant is much the same. Therefore, the possibility exists that the idea that there's one kind of thing, a photon, and another kind of thing, three Ws, is not right, that their four belong together somehow. And so the theory of Weinberg and Salam was to try to put electro the quantum electrodynamics with what's called a weak, the general weak interaction, into one theory. And they did it. But if you just look at the result that they've written, you can see the glue. What I mean is it's not a nice job, okay? <laughs> there is at the present time, it's, a, it's, it's very likely that it's interconnected. It's very clear that it's interconnected, that there are different aspects of the same thing. But at the present understanding of the knowledge, it's still not possible to see them very clearly as different objects of the same thing. You can make it look like the same thing, but you can see the seam between the things at the present time. It's not been smoothed out yet so that it becomes more beautiful and uh, therefore probably more correct. But it is uh, part of our theory today that these things belong together and the reason they, and they belong together in such a way that, that you can explain the connection between the coupling constants here and the coupling constant there, but that at the present time is not explained numerically, it just has to be measured. All right, that's the end of the weak interaction. Ah, we can breathe a sigh of relief. That's a limited number of particles. You're still within the possibility of un keeping this in your head. But now, if we start with the protons and the neutrons and hit them together, we get this enormous number of particles. And the nice thing, to, if I would give these lecture perhaps 10 years ago, I would show you all these particles and make the long list of them. And then my list that's starting here would have 405 objects and so forth. And I'll tell you all about the properties of them. And then I would explain to you that I believe that none of them are fundamental in the sense that they're propagated by one of those nice little formulas where you put a mass in, because they all appear method. The behavior is not like that. But in the meantime, in the 10 years, there's been developed a theory to explain this multitude by supposing that they're made out of other simpler things called quarks. Simpler in the sense that they're propagated by simple functions where all you do is change the mass number. Okay? Now this theory, the theory of quarks, is uh, what I must next describe and represents the theory of strong interaction. So, Let's use this. I see. There are more particles here, you see. But this board doesn't go into here. It goes under. And we can't see it. All right? Now, here's a new piece of paper on top of the other one, uh, which are called, which are the strongly interacting particles. And I'm not going to list those, but the particles that, are, that they're made out of, which are called quarks. And we're going to make a list of the quarks. Uh, by the way, uh, I have to say something. I, I've been leaving out polarization all the time. 
the polarization effect, and I'm not going to explain it now. But the electron has a different type of polarization than the photon. But all these particles in this list have that type. It's called spin a half is in technical language for that kind of polarization. And the polarization of a photon is called spin one, and the W also has spin one. So this list corresponds to a kind of polarization of spin one, and this list up here is spin a half, and as it turns out, the quarks are also spin a half. Same, all the same. Now, what are these quarks? What uh, is the story? It turns out that a thing like a, the quarks come in a, there are many different quarks, just like there are many different leptons. And they have names, which are so bad, I'm going to give them letters instead of names. The names are up, down, strain, charm, beauty, and so on. Uh, forget it. I prefer to call it U-type, D-type, S-type, C-type, and so on. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving them long names, we have the following kinds of quarks. A U-type, a D-type, an S-type, a C-type, a B-type, recently discovered. And as we'll go along, we'll see there must be more, almost certainly. And the next letter that we're sure we're going to use when we find it is T. <laughs> Some idiot named this charm particle, and this one beauty particle, and this one truth particle. <laughs> and I can't stand it, so I have to <laughs> my letters. Uh, these are then the quarks. And a proton, for example, is supposed to be made out of two U quarks and a D quark, three quarks inside, going around inside, three of them, two U's. U type is 1D. The neutron is 2D type and 1U. All right? Now, of the 405 particles that I don't, well, 405, that's silly. Of the hundreds and hundreds of particles I was talking about before, they go into two classes. Those which, when they disintegrate, ultimately end up as a proton at the lowest energy, and that like a neutron does, for instance. And those are all objects which are called, they're called, uh, baryons, and they have made out of three quarks. So some of these particles are made out of three quarks, a certain class. Another class is called mesons, of which pions are an example, are made out of a quark and an antiquark, and that's all we've found. There ain't no four quark guys, or two quark guys, or even one quark guy. What? No one quark guy? That would mean that you can't get these quarks apart so you can see one. So far, we have been unable to get these quarks apart. So you can see when you can hit those protons together as hard as you want, I mean, as hard as you're able to, and the quarks never come out. All they do is move around, produce new pairs, and form new groups of threes and particles and antiparticles. We can't get one separated. As soon as you get one separated, new pairs form in its neighborhood, particle, antiparticle, quark, antiquark, and they group up so that the quark, antiquark pairs are groups of three. At any rate, uh, the problem is, of course, what holds these quarks together inside a proton? And that force is large. That's what's strong. And that has to be done by another. Because the W's are a couple of weak and the photons a couple of weak, we need something that couples strong. And so I need another color for my chalk. Actually, I need three colors for my chalk. Uh, but I will play with the colors right now. We have pictures of what the quarks do inside a, a proton, for instance,